happy Sunday to you. I think it's the 15th of April, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't anymore see the date as I used to do in the past. Now, a lot of changes that are taking place in my personal self uh, due to the drastic change, of course, since four years ago. So, things that I used to do, I stopped doing, or things that I never thought I would be able to do, I start doing. And that's life. So, hope everyone is uh, having a nice Sunday. Uh, today I was going to swim, but um, uh, the water in the pool is not as overflowing as I would like it to be. So I didn't and just now it's going to rain soon. It's 3.30 uh, in the afternoon on Sunday almost. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's talk about um, Italian men because yes, uh, some would like to know about the romance and and anything Italian and I'm going to yes I'm going to make this video as a continuation of the series uh, that's titled Italian anything one right so now it's going to be Italian anything two all right I have to thread carefully here <laughs> because I do not want to categorize anything or anybody or any nation or any country or I am just sharing anything that is based on my own personal experience so please you don't take it as me generalizing it I'm just sharing what I have experienced this is the thing um, well I used to know Italian from America and I think I know, yeah, a couple of them as friends or as men who were interested in me. And their ways are completely different than the Italians from Italy. Let me tell you that. Never, never, never think that Italians from Italy, even the Italian food, Italian men in America, they're Americanized, which is actually a combination of the great quality because uh, as much as they are traditional, but also they have these um, expansive personalities, you know, uh, inclusive, uh, can do it, uh, you know, uh, anything goes. Whereas uh, Italians, Italy, I'm talking about the men on this uh, video. They are much more repressed. Could be their religion, could be their mom, could be their sister. I have no idea. Well, I actually have an idea because I've lived in Italy already. So um, I see it as uh, in the case of my husband is because of the sister because the sister is the older one and they're the only two siblings uh, in the family and uh, the sister is like seven years older than him so the domination on her part I think to him had some impacts and I s used to see that sometimes I commented sometimes I just gave up Italians in America, they're independent. They, 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 they <clears throat> they're more adventurous in terms of uh, 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 especially, uh, let's say, uh, you know, intimacy. Uh -oh. Now I'm going to touch some this, this thing that's quite private, but I'm just sharing. And uh, Italians, Italy, they have a lot of hang-ups, I'm afraid to say. A lot of hang-ups, sadly to say. But also, that is subject to their background. Because the, the high hierarchy, they are much more international in terms of behavior, mentality not 100 percent 
but at least they are much more uh, free. Whereas the Italians middle class, they are much more repressed. So they, they want to do this, but they don't want to do this. They want to do that, but they don't want to do that. Or they go all the way, or they don't. So it's a lot of extremities as well. And uh, sometimes it's sad to see, because the potential they have is there, but they don't know how to, to make use of it, at least those who I know. I do love the Italians in Italy because they are really, really highly romantic, very intensively um, uh, loving. But Americans, Italians are the same, or Italians in America are the same. The only thing is the Italians in Italy are much more traditional, shall we say? Not exactly. When they're faithful, they're faithful. But when they're not, they're not. And I have been so lucky to have met an Italian from Italy who's, who was very faithful. To him, the marriage was number one. I, I, I'm forever grateful for that. Uh, but they love women in general, and why not? You know, I love men who love women as long as they know their boundary, of course, <laughs> especially when they're committed to one woman already. So please just recognize your boundary, okay? Then all is good. But a lot of Italian men who are unfaithful in Milan, a lot of them. I have to say that the Italian men in Italy are more the shamanism chauvinism, uh, especially the older generation. Wow, they are the older generations. They were very, very chauvinistic and uh, very demanding, very uh, also childish and infantile, I must say. But I cannot also give faults to them 100% because their mother or their sister uh, doubt on them, but only because the of society in Italy. It's men. Men up here, always. And that's where the clash used to happen between my husband and I, because even though I'm Asian, they expected me to be geisha, all the time, which they saw in films, and they fantasized that Asian women are like that, but Indonesian women at least where I am from, we are not like that. Yes, we respect men. Yes, men is men. But, you know, we are not slaves. And the concept of uh, femininity in uh, Italy, it's that the women think that they have to be slave in order to show that they are feminine. And it's quite wrong in my humble opinion. So it's two totally different concepts. Well, in Indonesia, femininity is, is your smartness, but also your femininity in terms of uh, handling or, you know, carrying uh, yourself, self-respect, and, and, and knowing how to uh, navigate in such a way that your men feel men and you are the woman. And it's not between a boss and a subordinate. In Italy, oh my God, I witnessed so many, many things where the women are like slaves. And they cannot see that. Because for them, to serve the men is femininity. Yes, we do serve men here also, but in that equal manner kind of way, it's not like slave. Because like when I went to the, my sister-in-law's house, she never sit down with us because she was always busy running up and down from the kitchen to the dining table. Also because the Italian meal requires you to prepare right at the moment when you're ready to eat. So it's understandable. You go to the kitchen, have the pasta ready, bring to the dining table and go to the kitchen and make the secondo, which is the main course ready. 
and then go to the kitchen and have the dessert ready. But do it in a graceful, graceful manner, you know, in a way that people don't feel that you're missing <laughs> at the table. Whereas my sister-in-law, she was never <laughs> at the table, and the husband used to just scream and say, I want the wine here, I want the beef, because when they eat pasta, you know, the squirts of the sauce, he wanted a bit. Can you imagine? He couldn't even get up to get it himself. So that was one of the things that I was shocked in it. And for that, a lot of uh, his friends or even his sister, I have to uh, include here, think that I uh, changed him and I didn't. I didn't. Yes, I, 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 I tried to enlighten him on some things that could be beneficial to himself and to our rapport, you know, to our marriage. Uh, and I, you know, put at arm's length when it comes to negativity in Milan because I realized that uh, if I started allowing myself to be uh, dragged into their kind of uh, na narrative, um, it would bring me down as well. So I kept myself to myself, uh, and that's when they thought maybe I was a, like a standoffish. But as a matter of fact, I was, uh, I was afraid that I would be like one of them, and that is to be negative and just whining and complaining and just talking negative every time, you know, and seeing everything in a bad light and I didn't allow myself to do that because I had to defend myself being the foreigner living in Milan in Italy even though my husband the one who loved me very much was an Italian man you know I do understand their feelings because uh, their their men came all the way to Indonesia or went all the way to Indonesia and bring a girl to their country for them you know there were ladies whose daughters uh, were you know ready to be uh, introduced to my husband because since I told you already that they're classes so they try to stay among their own level and since my husband was an engineer and mind you in Italy which I find quite behind in their mentality and that is you know titles are very very uh, very very uh, highly highly regarded in Milan or in Italy and, uh, you know, the, they, they, they would like to have their daughter married, my husband. And uh, my husband just came here to Indonesia, met me, and then brought me like a princess uh, to Italy and, you know, did whatever he, you know, he wanted and not listening to none of them. So, of course, the animosity towards me was already formed by these people, even though they were nice and friendly when they met me, when I was introduced to them, but still... You know, the, that kind of resentment were harbored in them. And that's why, even though I, I, I didn't speak Italian, I felt the, the vibes. And um, I had to go through all that. And um, it was tough. It was tough because it took, took me years until I realized that I just had to protect myself. And that is not to associate with them unless I was with my husband. And then I was just being friendly and then, you know, stayed. At my place. That had helped me a great deal, and thank God also that my husband had uh, job assignments uh, brought, uh, which he opted, given that he saw it was difficult for me to live in, in Milan, and uh, him embracing the international mentality that he liked. However, he had a lot of conflicts with that also. One minute he could be international, the next minute he could be really that angry. Um, full of a lot of uh, what do you call that uh, you know swear words kind of uh, temperament you must, you must understand in Italy to, to, to swear is common so they don't feel anything because it's their culture but to me every time for all those years that I lived there it felt like I always had to take a shower every time I had to listen to those swear words. Not that I'm miss uh, clean and prissy and couldn't. I just couldn't. I, I, I'm not used to growing up with people swearing around me. 
I'm just not used to it. It's not in my culture. It's not in my family's life. Just to close this vlog, uh, I do love their uh, their humor. And once you're accepted by them, it's it's comfortable. It's cozy with them, you know. They're just very, very open to you. They would get met with you openly, but they're also friendly with you openly. So, you know, uh, you just have to get used to their sarcasm or their cynicism or their, uh, what do you call that, uh, in your face kind of uh, telling you off. Oof, that one is something that I couldn't adapt until, but today. that's their culture. So I am so grateful that I've been given the opportunity to have lived in that country, to have known the culture, to have known the mentality, to have experiences in the grand way living there. I am just beyond grateful. I love Italian people. I love Italy. And most of all, I love Milan. So that's my story of Italy. Okay, hope you enjoyed this vlog.